The movie starts with a man called Steve Battier, a wealthy man who made his fortune by founding a famous technology company is old and terminally ill. He is desperately trying to find a way to stay alive. Therefore, he visits a company that will have a solution to his age-related problem. He meets the gamekeeper, the person responsible for running the company. The gamekeeper begins explaining about the company. It is called Real Playing Game, which makes advanced studies on neurocellular technology that aim to give its clients a eternal youth. After years of study, the company has found a way to transfer the mind of a person to a new body. This particular technology will help an elderly man or woman to transfer into a young body and experience youth. But there is a catch. For someone to have a body transfer into, someone young has to die. This was a primary reason for the company to exist in secrecy. For the brain to access the information from the old brain in a new body, the old body must stay at absolute rest. For this reason, the company has built a controlled environment which helps to monitor the vitals of the old body. And this technology of putting the old mind in a young body is not yet perfect. The time frame in which the new body runs with the old body is short, the company is simply offering a radical experience to have within a game. The experience will forever stay in the memory of the player. The game is played by nine other participants who are also famous, wealthy, and come from different backgrounds. They are put in the young and beautiful bodies of their choosing. Then they will spend the coming hours in a secret location only known to the gamekeeper where only one player will come out alive. The participants will kill each other to stay alive and the winner will get to keep the young body and even get the chance to live a very long life when the technology in the future advances. Steve initially hesitates stating that he doesn't like the violence but he is desperate to experience youth and doesn't have have much time. So he makes a payment, which is a very large sum of money, and decides to join the game. Before going into the monitoring area, Steve chooses his young body, while the gamekeeper chooses a remote place, some abandoned place in Portugal. Steve, who had a choice of having different bodies of both man and woman, chooses a young man's body. Then Steve wears an experiment suit and joins the nine other players inside the monitoring place. After the gamekeeper announces that they will stay young for 10 hours, they go under and the game begins. Steve wakes up in his young body and meets the other players. After meeting each other, everyone asks each other about who they are, but nobody can answer for sure since they couldn't exactly remember what they were doing before, they decide to look around and meet the rest of the players, who also claim they don't know anything. Now, there are five men and five women in the same boat. The group decides to look inside an old building after a female player suggests it was the only building she saw. They go inside the building and begin exploring. Suddenly, in one room of the building, the hologram of the gamekeeper appears. The gamekeeper tells them they are in a game, and he is the gamekeeper who will give them the rules. He also tells them they entered willingly after making a very huge payment. The players don't believe what they are hearing, and some of them even think it is some kind of joke played by some rich guy. But the gamekeeper starts to explain everything, showing them their real bodies at the game center. They don't remember everything because their memories have been adapted to the age of the new bodies. Some of the players are happy when they hear in the real world, they are wealthy, powerful, and famous people. When the gamekeeper begins identifying each of their names, the hologram of the person he described appears. After the introductions, he proceeds to list the rules. The first rule is only one person will be alive at the end of the game. The second one is that one of the players must kill another with each hour, or the game will randomly choose the person who dies. The last rule is the players have to correctly identify the real identity of the person they kill. After killing another player, the player has 10 minutes to come back to this place and touch the hologram of the person he believes he killed. If a player identifies the wrong person, that will result in the death of the player. Then the gamekeeper tells them another important fact. Although there are five men and five women in the game, in reality, there are four women and six men. This means no one can make gender assumptions. A male participant may have chosen a female body and vice versa, and most importantly, the game cautions them against revealing compromising information to each other, which will make a player an easy target. The hologram of the gamekeeper phases out after wishing them luck. Steve, now in a young man's body, begins to approach and read his hologram. The other players notice him and ask him if it is him, 
But Steve quickly tries to take the attention off himself by saying he will read everybody's profile. Tensions are already building up between the player, and one of them starts to suspect Steve and accuses him of being the computer guy who created the game. After a few chats amongst themselves, they decide to try and find a way out of the place. They reach a fence that surrounds the whole area. One of the players tests the fence by throwing a piece of wood at it and an electric spark is created. This meant no one was getting out and one of the players with an Asian look told them they had 40 minutes until the hour was up. The group gathers around and starts speculating about the game. One of the females alludes to being a lesbian after telling the group she has some memories of women but ends her statement by saying it all might not be true. Then the group turns its attention to the Asian looking man after one of the players points out that one of the holograms belongs to a Chinese nationality. The Asian man then responds saying a Chinese man would do anything to pose as a Westerner. Steve then gives his perspective. He tells the group that everyone is falling into the trap of the people who designed the game. After being left with a few minutes until the hour is up, the group decides to go to the hologram room. But Steve refuses to go with the group. He tells the group it is better to wait out the hour on their own because people tend to do the most unpredictable things. Although one of the players tells him the game could just randomly kill him, Steve decides to take his chance and split up. After realizing the hour is near, everyone starts to split. However, Steve is not alone. He is followed by a woman whom he met the moment he woke up in the game. The woman tells him that she is not a killer, and in return, he tells her that he prefers dying randomly by the game rather than killing someone else. They bond over this common idea, and they decide to stick together and take care of each other, but avoid talking about their personalities. The woman agrees with him and kisses him, telling him they should enjoy this young body while they can. Those who decide to go at it alone are suspicious of each other. One player collects different rocks, to use as a weapon, another guy practices karate moves using some sticks. One of the women, however, has decided to satisfy her carnal urges. She comes on to the one with the karate moves and seduces him. They have intercourse while the player who is collecting stones watches them. Meanwhile, while everyone was not looking, the Asian guy read his hologram. His name was Li Meng, a powerful Chinese politician. He smiles after seeing his profile, thinking nobody would look for something obvious. On another part of a compound, the woman who claimed to be a lesbian and another black woman took a walk near the fence. The woman, claiming to be a lesbian, shares her stories with boys and her first kiss with a black woman who seems to be interested in her. The black woman gets close to her and invites a kiss from the woman. After they kiss each other, the black woman shouts at her, saying she is not a lesbian. She tells her that she is not even a woman. The black woman then asks her about the medical terms of vaginal and cervical exams. The other woman hesitated to answer. This was something a woman should know. The black woman uses this opportunity to corner and push her to fences. The woman, claiming to be a lesbian, gets vapor immediately. The black woman calls for help and uses it to distract the others while she goes to the hologram room. However, Steve and his girl saw everything while hiding behind a bush. This horrifies Steve's girl and she goes to hug him. The black woman has made it to the other room, but Li Meng, who was near the hologram, secretly watches her actions. She approaches the hologram and hesitantly touches the hologram of Jorge Valdez, a famous American football player. The hologram fades out and nothing happens to her. Then she quickly circles back and pretends as if she'd just first arrived there. The others have gone to see the remains of the dead girl, and it makes the player, who was collecting stones, puke. They gather in the hologram room and start a conversation about what just happened. The black woman tells her she saw the girl die and acted surprised when they told her the hologram belonged to a man. Li Meng, who saw her touch the hologram, asked her if the death was even accidental, but she stuck with her story. The players are left with a question, is this death accidental or did someone start playing the game? After what happened to the female player, everyone is on their toes. One other female player, who was holding a stick from the beginning, is now building some kind of hideout for herself. But the black woman is already making her next move. She cozies up to this player, and they start spending some time. On the other hand, the player who collects stones makes his move. He sneaks up on a female player, who previously seduced another player, and drags her into the hologram room. Two other male players tried to calm him down, but he was already unhinged. He holds her down and breaks her arm with a stone to make her talk. 
The other players show up while he continues to torture her. They try to talk some sense into him, but he still refused to listen. The female player asks him to end it after she tells him she is the actress. He slaughters her neck and touches the hologram, but the game destroys him. This meant the female lied to him. She was the singer, and he was the African president, and a fanatic Catholic. Meanwhile, Steve has started sleeping with his girl, and while taking a nap on her lap, he unexpectedly wakes up in the adult body at the game center. The gamekeeper tells him this was a temporary setback, and sends him back to the game. However, his girl reveals her true colors and begins attacking him. He tries to talk her out of her madness, but she keeps attacking him. He hits her right eye, and she stumbles into a well and drowns. On the other hand, the black woman tries to make her second kill by trying to strangle the other female player while making out. But this woman was not the one to go down. She stabs her in the arm, and the black woman flees, who flees to the building. While Steve was going to the hologram room, the only two players who hadn't killed anyone noticed him since his girl was not by his side. Suspecting he killed the woman, they decide to follow him. Steve quickly goes into the room and touches the actress's hologram. Then on his way out, he bumps into the black woman and leaves after telling her she is next. Then Lee Meng confronts the black woman about the first player and throws her down from a certain floor and she dies after falling a couple of stories. Lee Meng goes back to the hologram room, thinking the black woman was the actress, but he is shocked to find her hologram missing. The two male players, who haven't killed anyone, tell him the actress was already killed by the computer geek, and they begin to wonder what will happen to him after they know that he doesn't know who he has killed. But in the end, Lee Meng ends up choosing the correct hologram. She was a lesbian woman named Maria. Now, there are three males and one woman left in the game. Next, Steve runs into the woman who stabbed Maria in the arm. He tries to ignore her and walk away, but she keeps following him, asking him about the girl he was with. He admits to killing her, claiming it was self-defense. Then she tells him if this was like a video game, there should be bone packages. But he ignores her and keeps walking. After walking for a while, they meet Lin Meng, who was trying to jump out of the compound after climbing a tree. Steve saves his life after testing the fence by throwing a rock at it. It still had a spark and Lin Meng got down. The two players, debating the identity of those remaining in the game, find Steve, Lin Meng, and the woman. They call a meeting on the spot and everyone starts to turn turn on Steve. The players corner him and he retreats to the fence, but he raises one question. He asks them if the game will kill anyone without anyone interfering. The woman mentions the death of the first girl, but Lin Meng corroborates Steve's story, saying he saw her touching the hologram. In the end, Steve manages to convince them to wait for an hour to be up at the swimming pool. While the players are waiting at the pool, Maria briefly wakes up and her hologram is back. But she didn't stay long as she immediately died again, causing her hologram to disappear again. The hour is up and nothing happened. Steve credits this to the two deaths in an hour, but in reality, it was Maria's brief moment. The players have one more hour on their hands. Lin Meng decides to chase the woman after identifying that she is a princess. He has her cornered in a single room, but she has a surprise for him. She points a gun at him, but escapes after shooting him in the leg because she doesn't know him. Lin Meng, now an easy target, goes to the top of the building and throws himself down. Then the princess kills one of the two male players who took her gun and tried to use it on her after stabbing him with a sharp steel. Steve uses this opportunity to grab the gun and throw it into the pool. Then he confuses the only male player who turns out to be a former Russian spy and kills him while he is distracted by the thoughts of sleeping with the only woman. Finally, Steve tries to seduce the princess who doesn't know about the death of the Russian. His seduction technique works on her and he kills her, puncturing her neck with a broken glass. Steve, now back in the real world, walks away from the company with his new body after offering the gamekeeper a lot of money to do whatever it takes to keep running the company. The movie ends with the gamekeeper inviting another old sick client into the game. 